Good day everybody. Today we're going to do lesson plan number three, grade four, term two. Um, our topic is addition filling up tens by breaking down the number to be added. Um, this is a different method. Please note um, that if your child or your learners feel comfortable with the previous method, that used in the previous lesson, carry on with that method. Um, otherwise, introduce this method as well. Very, very important skill that we're teaching them here. So um, it's not always just to leave these type of methods because then we might need those skills at a later stage. Um, the It's also linked to the DBE worksheet number 31. So just to show you, this is worksheet number 31. Very nice activities there. Remember, you can do this or you can do the SAT worksheets or both of them. Um, again, practice makes perfect. Then we got the link to the CAPS document. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll to this point where you can pause. Then you can look at the resources. There's some very interesting did you know questions that you can do. Interesting facts. And then obviously the dictionary. The dictionary explains to you what the words mean that we're going to use today. Remember the learners don't have to memorize these. Um, you just need to understand it to help them to understand the concept. So let's then get the learners here. So what we're going to start off with is then our mental mathematics. So again, is they can answer it orally or you can let them write down the answers. Um, so I want you to do that now by pausing this video. Okay, welcome back. So let's quickly see. We're going to then reveal the answers. Um, you can pause again and quickly mark it. Well done. Okay, let's then start with the lesson. So what does it mean to filling up tens by breaking down the number to be added? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at these examples. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close up the answers. So let's use my little curtain here. Um, so I'm going to close it up on this side. Um, Then on this side as well, just slightly so they can't see it. And then we're going to come to this side. Okay, just move it a bit like that. So we close it up. Okay, so what we're going to do is how fast can you fill up the tents? So first, and this is where you need some skills to understand what's tens and what's hundreds. So the 43 is between which two tens? It's between 40 and 50, but we want to fill up the tens. So what will the next number be? The next number will be 50. Let's do this one. What will the next number be of the next 10 after 67? Yes, 70. 80, the next one after. We're not rounding off. We look at what is the next 10. 81 will be between 80 and 90, but we're going to fill up to 90. 92 is between 90 and 100, so we're going to fill up to 100. 38 is between 30 and 40, so we're going to fill up to 40. I'm quickly going to remove here. So now, how do we fill up? So we say 43 plus what will give us 50? It's 7. 67 plus what will give me 70? I want you to pause the video now and then say exactly what I did by completing 81, 92, 38. So now what I want you to do is um, you need to look at 15, 54, 23, 76, and 87. And do it exactly the same as what you did on this side, but you do it orally. You time to pause the video. Well done. Let's quickly look at it. So what you did is you again ask yourself, 15 is between which two tens? 10 and 20. And what you did is you added then 5 to get to 20. You can pause now to check if your answers are right. So let's look at the next one. How fast can you fill up to hundreds? So I'm just going to show you the first one. So what we did 
do now is we look at the hundreds. So 127 is between 100 and 200. So what we want to do is we want to fill it up to the next 100. So I need to add 127 plus 73 equals to 200. If I go down here, the next one is 716 is between which two hundreds? It's between 700 and 800. So what I need to do is then I need to fill it to 800. And what you're going to do is you're going to say 716 plus what is 800. I quickly want you to try these three by yourself. Pause the video. Well done. Let's quickly see. Yes, so this one, this number is between 900 and 1,000. This one between 400 and 500. And this one between 100 and 200. And you fold up the numbers. I want you now to do this side, exactly what you did this side, by pausing the video now. Welcome back. Let's quickly see what you did. Did you get the same answers? Well done. Let's start with the concept development. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the first example. So um, we have 2,486 2, plus 48. So we're going to look at 2,486. So what we want to do is we want to make this number or change it or take it to the next hundred. So it's easy for us to add the two digit number. So we got 2,486. 2, We're only looking at the hundreds and ask between which hundreds will 486 be. So it will be between 400 and 500. So what we're going to do is, to get it to 500, we need to add 14. But because we add 14 to this number, I need to subtract 14 from 48. So how will my sum look like now? I say 2,486 plus 14 plus my 48. But now, if I added 14 here, I need to minus 14 here. So how does my sum look like now? I've got 2,500. I still need to subtract 48 minus 14. So I've got 2,500. 48 minus 14 is 34. And then it's easy to add these. And it's 2,534. So those teachers and parents that's aware of what learners are doing in grade 8 and 9, will realize that what, what we do here is we already start the basics of algebraic equations and expressions. So that's why it's not always extra methods or to make mathematics more difficult. It's certain techniques that we use when we do number work that we later are going to apply to when we work with variables. Those of you that can't remember what variables are, those are like A, B, C, or X. So X plus Y equals Z. Um, so those alphabetical letters. So let's quickly look. If I take the same example, but I write it underneath each other. So what we have is, we still got 2,486 plus 48. So what do we want to do? We look at the hundreds. We want to fill it up to the next hundred. What I realized is that 486 is between 400 and 500. So I'm going to add 14 to make this 2,500. But what I need to do is I need to subtract the 14. If I subtract the 14 plus the 8, what do I need to do with this? I need to write it, the biggest number first, minus 14. And now what I get is 2,500 plus 34. And when I add that all together, it's 2,534. You can pause at this stage and go through the examples again. Um, 
please, children, learners, try to explain this to your mommy and daddy. That's the best way you will understand things. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at example number two. So what I want you to do is um, with example number two, we're only going to do it as an extra activity. So um, you can pause here, you can read through it, and you can try to do um, the activity. But at this stage, it's not necessary to do that at all. Um, we will come back later on on checking of answers at a later stage. So what I want you to do now is to focus on example one and then go to your worksheet and then do the, uh, the answers. Um, you probably need more paper um, or more lines to do your work. And if you can complete it within three steps, it's fine. Otherwise, you do it in your writing book. And um, remember, checking your answers is only additional activity at the moment. Now, with problem solving, with problem solving, you're going to do and you're going to use the tips that I gave you before, where you're first going to um, identify then the numbers. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to identify the keyword. So my mom bought a bed for 5,695. She paid 56 each for four new pillows. How much did she pay altogether? So we got two things. We know that we need to add because you got all together. But what's very important is here um, is that she paid 46 each for four new pillows. So what you need to do is you need to have 5,696. So I'm going to, going to type it 5,695, sorry. And you're going to plus, but now what you do is you have 56 times four new pillows. And then you're going to solve it. Good luck. So let's go then to the extra activities. Here again, what you have is you have questions and, uh, and like a brain teasers or problem solving coming from previous exam papers. Um, remediation, um, we got some real life examples of how to filling up the tents. Maybe if a child works with real life examples, you can support them to understand the importance of filling up the tents. Then what you're going to do is the consolidation. The consolidation, you're going to break down um, you just have one question and to say, can children break down numbers to add them together again? If it's yes, um, you can carry on with the le next lesson. If it's no, um, you, can, you need to revisit, revise, or you can contact SA teacher.